My background in fashion goes back 20 years ago. So when I was 17, I was originally scouted by a photographer to do some modeling, which obviously at 17 I loved. It was a great ego boost and I thought it was wonderful that I'd been chosen. So I did uh, quite a few headshots and, and then as you know in the industry word spreads and you sort of get passed around, the name gets passed around. So I did a fair bit of work with a few different photographers on the circuit. And then it was suggested that I should put a portfolio together and hit some of the agencies, which of course I did. I thought that was wonderful. Um, I was already training as a makeup artist then, so that was my passion. But I thought, well, this is great because I'm in the industry and I can, if, if people think I could be good, that's, that's what I'll do. So I did that, built a nice portfolio together and started to, to look at going to castings and, and getting into an agency. And it was then, I think, it, the first seeds were sown that there was something wrong in the fashion industry because I had been into a couple of different agencies with my portfolio at the tender age of 17 and told that I was way too big, way too fat. And that was, you know, age 17, that would you think that would be a big knock to someone's confidence. Um, and this is back in the 90s now, so it was when Kate Moss was at her peak and it was all about very, very tiny models, as it seems to have gone back to now. Now, fortunately, I've always had a relatively good sense of self. And although I've got my hang ups like everybody else and I know what, what I, I've got things I like about myself, things I dislike, even at 17, I, it, it kind of hit me that there's nothing really wrong with me. I, I'm looking at other people you know, outside in, in society that look pretty much like me and are very different. So what I was being told by these companies didn't sit very well. I didn't have the usual response of, I better go on a diet, I, you know, there's something wrong with me. I just thought, that's wrong, that's even at 17, that is, that's not right. You know, I was probably size 10 then. Um, so not, not big by any stretch of the imagination, but I had curves, I had boobs, I had a bum. And they told me that I, I should really look at going into glamour instead of normal fashion. You know, you're the right height, you've got quite a pretty face. We could work with you with some, you know, headshots. And, and you know, you, unfortunately, we could put you on a runway because you're tall, but you're a little bit too big. I thought, ah, that's, that's not good. That's not right. So rather than trying to chase that particular dream, I, I, I didn't feel comfortable going into the sort of glamour side of things. So I went ahead and went back into my makeup artistry training. Did a little bit with some hair and some cosmetics companies, but I had lost my passion for even going down that road at that point because it just struck me as being really negative and, and very damaging. So that was the, the first experience that I had within the fashion industry. Then obviously after that, my career grew as a makeup artist and then later on a hairstylist. So I got to see a lot of the other angles of fashion, working on lots of photo shoots and then later on lots of fashion shows. So through my entire career, I've seen um, women's vulnerabilities, particularly women, I say that women, there's a lot of men, obviously it's the same thing for guys, but particularly in my industry, women that have had their vulnerabilities exploited to sell products or to sell an idea. And it never sat well with me and it kind of sort of festered and grew and grew. And the more I worked with models and members of the public, the more I could see this really sinister dark side to fashion where it's all about profit and power and status and manipulation. And what everybody's fed in the media is all lovely and pretty and great, but it's not a real image. And it's very, very, very damaging to people, to self-esteem and, and to their body image. So it kind of been a whole 20 year process of learning and watching and experiencing things until I came to the point a couple of years ago that I thought, yeah, it's, just, it's not getting any better. If anything, it's getting worse and children are being exposed to it earlier and earlier and earlier. And now I'm a mother and I don't want my kids having to go through that. So I, I thought I'm just going to do my own fashion show that's a little bit different and nowhere near what it's become now. It was just about really representing me, I suppose, at a, a, a more selfish level. I thought nobody represents me, my body shape, my style on a catwalk and I've got lots of friends that represent that kind of similar alternative fashion. So I'm just going to put a show on for, for you know, us punky girls and that was the original idea was to do something aimed at a different kind of fashion and hopefully to combat some stereotypes and to just celebrate a different style of fashion that wasn't constantly being drip fed through the media and obviously as you know after that it kind of has grown and grown and grown. So now the word alternative, to me, represents 99% of the population who feel that they're not represented on, the, on, on mainstream runways. Yeah, so I'd hate to generalise at this point, but again, using my knowledge of past history and what I can see going on around me now, um, I'm really pleased that in the media at the moment, a lot of companies, bigger companies are coming out saying that they celebrate diversity and there's, we're starting to see a few more tattooed people out there and different hair colours and different sizes and obviously plus size and positive body image um, in general is being celebrated a lot more than it was before. But I still feel like some of these companies, the larger model agencies and the larger sort of brands that are doing their castings, may be, again, exploiting that to, to get what they need out of people and they're not actually representing the true society as it is. 
So now our Alt Fashion Fest is growing a little bit and we've had so many different cross sections of, of the public coming forward from disabled to transgender to plus size to petite. There's so many different people that have gotten involved now and said we're not represented either, can we come along? I feel like it's a really important community that's coming together now to celebrate and, and I'm hoping that we've, we've, we've got it or we're nearly there to celebrate absolutely everybody that could be watching at home can say, do you know what, That's I, I feel like I've, you know, I'm actually being represented and I can be confident about my own style and I don't have to change to fit into another style and weirdly enough at the moment I keep thinking about it all the time because we're getting such positive feedback from the show I keep thinking why isn't why has nobody done this before because and I thought you know it's all about again power money and greed people can make a lot of profit by preying on vulnerabilities to sell an idea or to sell a product to make someone feel better and I understand that I understand how business works but I just wonder, is there a way to balance sort of ethics and morals with that? Because surely if you take a lot of people with their very different shapes and sizes and, and styles and pitch to them as their own person, surely that is going to create a profit and make them buy, but in a positive way so they feel good about themselves. And that's what I want to try and do. When I look back, because a lot of people are asking me lately, why are you doing this and what's it all about? And it really does, it, the, the root of it comes from my experiences throughout the last 20 years. When I think about it, I do realise and I'm quite thankful that it could have been a very different story for me and I could quite easily have taken a massive knock to my self-esteem. And, you know, there's all sorts of terrible things that can happen when that, when that happens, but particularly to, to women lately. Again, men, I've seen some terrible stories of guys being in similar positions but things like uh, eating disorders, bulimia, anorexia, self-harming, suicide attempts, there's uh, crippling self-esteem issues, agoraphobia, uh, lots of different psychological problems that can come from it. That you're just from being told that you're not normal or you're not adequate or you're not good enough and, and constantly looking at these images of what perfection is and knowing that you can never measure up to that and it just has stuck with me ever since for 20 years how damaging and how dangerous that is and I do think I'm really lucky that I had the presence of mind at that early age to think I don't do you know what I don't think I don't think I'm that wrong I think it's you guys that are wrong by not representing normal people. And I was also, I think, a lot to do with it because I was already working in the industry on the other side of the camera. I was training to be a makeup artist at the time. I think I got to see the way the models are lit, the way they're photographed, the positioning they were put in and the editing. So I knew from a very early age that the reality and what, what was put out in the media were two very different things. So I think that helped me not be too bothered by it and develop a bit of a thicker skin. But a lot of people don't have that that opportunity to see that. They only see the finished result and they're constantly measuring up to that and feeling very inadequate. And I, especially young girls, it worries the life at me for youngsters because I do a lot of mentoring with, with particularly year nine girls in high school. And that's the crucial age where they kind of start to get on that slippery slope. And the amount of kids now that have these issues, that have eating disorders already and are self-harming frequently and are bullying each other, especially on social media, lots of cyberbullying and all these images getting thrown around and these kids trying to be carbon copies of their idols that they see you know, on the telly and, and in the media. It really does worry me that we're not not only are we not getting any better with this from my experience 20 years ago it's getting very quickly very steadily worse so something has to be done about it and I think I can use my knowledge and my experience to be able to maybe make some changes. I think what started off as a just a one show that's now turned into a kind of I suppose a, um, a community and a, and a big project um, a social project for me is about representing everybody we can possibly represent that may feel like they've been discarded before for whatever reason so we have had and we will be having on our, on our catwalks and performing our shows people from all different kinds of backgrounds different ages we've got kids in the section because we, we have a lot to do with anti-bullying and anti-hate crime and, and you know to promote diversity and and stamp out prejudice so we think it's important to get the youth section in so we've got kids and then we've got a lot of older models that are getting involved so there's no age limit on it there's no size limit we've got very very petite very short very tall plus size we've got different genders there's different sexual orientation different social backgrounds we've got people with disfigurements with disabilities in wheelchairs on crutches that have limbs missing that are blind we've you know there's so many different people that are involved no one is excluded from what we're doing because you know, everybody that's, that's come forward and said we'd love to be in your show, there is somebody out there at home that's sitting there thinking, you know, I'm, I'm abnormal, I'm wrong, I'm not included in any of these nice things. And they really should be because it's, uh, that's the whole beauty of, of human beings in general, is the fact that they're different and they have different stories. I think that's got lost in translation because of consumerism over the years. And people are told they have to fit in this really 
ridiculously conformative box in order to be, you know, to be right and normal. And, and hopefully we can stamp that out. And we're growing, we're gathering momentum as we go. So I'm really, really pleased with the fact that we can drive it forward and really get that positive, positive message out there with a sniffing dog in the background. <laughs>